Hello, let's talk about U properties. Um, this could be an introduction for somebody who's never seen these before, or for somebody who just wants to understand what all the different specifiers do. So I made a bunch of components on my actor. So in Unreal Engine, an actor is an object that can be placed in the world. Uh, and actors consist of components, which are reusable um, bits of code that let you do things, right? Um, for example, a scene component is a transform, so it's a location in the world, um, so that an actor can be moved around, um, and you can have multiple components that attach uh, to have multiple transforms if they were all scene components. Anyway, looking at our U property specifiers here, this one, uh, the U properties are a reflection system, the reflection macros that Unreal Engine uses to know how to show. Um, variables and components in the editor. Um, without these macros, they just won't appear there. They'll be hidden and, and stay in C++. But if you want to show things in, in the editor, in blueprints, then you need to use these specifiers for the objects. So to start with, view property, this one is empty, as you can see. So we have one, I've named these so that it's easy to tell. So here's, I've made another scene component, which is visible anywhere, visible defaults only, visible instance only, uh, edit anywhere, edit defaults only, and edit instance only. That's the six specifiers you can choose from. And I made variables that match that as well, except for one special one, which is edit fixed size. So edit fixed size is used for arrays where you want to control the size of the array um, in edit, you know, you want to prevent someone in editor from changing the size of the array. Um, so anyway, that actually combines with another specifier you have to have edit anywhere or visible anywhere or one of the others. Otherwise, you won't even be able to see this. If you just do edit fixed size, it won't show up. So if we run these just to see what happens in the editor, I made a blueprint um, test actor here, which is just a subclass of that. Um, and as you can see, we can see all of our components, all seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, appear in the editor here. So if you look here, here's all of them, all seven, which is interesting, right? Because you would, you'd suspect that you wouldn't be able to see the edit anywhere ones or edit instance only ones. I mean, yeah, the edit instance only ones or visible instance only ones, because these should only appear in the world, yet you can see them in the editor, which makes me think that they don't intend you to use those specifiers for components. It's probably best to use visible anywhere. Um, but anyway, as we look through these, you can see that the one that's just a U property that has no specifier, the empty scene component, this one here, it appears, no, no properties appear here. All right, so you can't actually change anything related to it. Um, if we go back here, we can see my variables I created and we'll talk about those in a minute. But if you look at any of the others, all of the others look just the same inside this archetype, which is the version of your actor that's contained in the content browser. Now the actual instance that's in the world, let's take a look at it. So if you put it in the world, we can see all seven of our components still. We can't edit the ones that are just a U property with no specifier. The visible anywhere, defaults only, and instance only ones we can see and edit like normal. And the same with these other three. But what's interesting is if you come down here and you see the variables within the test actor, these ones that are edit anywhere or edit default or edit instance only, these two show up as created pointers. So it's like you could replace these with objects. This is weird and you would not want to do this. Um, so if you're making components, you would, you just don't want to use these U property specifiers right here for components that you're going to construct um, in the constructor of your C class. So let's just delete these. You would never want to do this. If you have a reference to an object and you wanted, uh, like, let's say, you actually wanted a reference to a scene component, like this, like you're pointing at some component that already exists, you would use a U property transient so that it would not be saved 
um, into your archetype or the object in the world because this would be a transient reference. Anyway, so it, it seems to me that they continue to use visible anywhere um, given that visible defaults only and visible instance only uh, produce the same results. Uh, and technically what happens is it is visible anywhere. You can see it in the archetype and in the one in the world. So let's kill those two. So the, really the only two prop U properties you're going to use for components are the empty one or visible anywhere. The empty one not allowing any changes um, in the blueprint and the visible anywhere allowing any. So moving on from that, let's look at our variables. So let's recompile and take a look. Now, if we look here, we've only got the two components that I had uh, left. Remember the one that's empty, the one that you can change anything on. Uh, and if we look in the world, the two components are here, can't change anything, can change anything. And if you look here, we no longer have weird uh, editable components here that don't make sense. Here's our uh, variables. So if we look back here, here they are. So here's the one that's visible anywhere. So you see we cannot change it, but it's visible. Here's visible defaults only. We can see it, but we can't change it. Defaults only mean the archetype, which is this object here that's in the content browser. If we look here in the world, you don't see the visible defaults only, right? Or edit defaults only, because those only appear here in the archetype. So edit visible defaults only and edit defaults only only appear in the archetype and not in the world. And if you see there's visible instance only and edit instance only, and those will not appear here in the archetype. So that way you can choose if you want something to be changed only here in the archetype or only here in the world. For example, if you were making a reference to another object in the world, then you would only want it to be editable in the instance, right? Because you'd want to put that reference here. It doesn't make sense that it would be here. And in fact, this guy, the archetype can't get that reference. Like I can't point something here like to this light, let's say. Um, I can't make reference from this archetype into the world and point at something in the level. I can only do that on an instance that's in the level. So that's what those are about. Um, so that explains these three. If you want it to be editable, if you want it to be editable in the archetype or the instance, or if you want it to only be editable in the archetype or only be editable in the instance. It's, it all makes perfect sense. The only other interesting one is this fixed size. So if you see the fixed size array is four elements, but there's no way to change the size of this. I can change the values, um, and if we look here, you can see that I made it edit anywhere and edit fixed size. So this makes it so the array size cannot change, and this makes it so that it's editable anywhere. But how did I initialize this array? I did it in post load. So if you override the post load function, and you make sure to call super on it, now you can initialize your array any way you want in post load. Um, and it will set the size or values or whatever, right? So this is really useful if you had a certain number of array elements that you wanted somebody to be able to change but no more or base it on something like a tile size or, or something physical. Um, so I hope that helps to explain you properties. If you have any questions related to them, um, there's of course a big web page that explains them that Epic provides. But these mostly just tell you the same thing that you get um, from the comments in the code. Um, and if you're using Rider, um, as you type one of these, you can highlight it and it will tell you about the reflection specifiers um, to help you understand them. Thanks.